Welcome to our Policy and Strategy Committee of the Nottingham Shrine City of Nottingham Fire and Rescue Authority on Friday the 2nd of February here at Fire HQ. I'm going to move straight into the agenda if colleagues are happy with that. So the first item on our agenda is apologies for absence. Catherine, apologies for absence? Chair, we've got apologies from Councillor Turner and Councillor Bailey substituting today. Very welcome, Carl. All right, good to see you. Any other apologies? No. Uh, item two then, and colleagues, is declarations of interest. Any declarations of interest for any members or officers present? I'm not seeing any indications. Item three then is the minutes of the meeting that was held on the 11th of November, which are on the yellow pages, three to six in the pack. Are there any comments or questions in relation to the minutes? Colleagues, absolutely. I can actually see those for the meeting on the 11th of November. It's not the date, the, min the minutes say the 17th, 17th of November. Sorry. <coughs> Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary and Fire and Rescue Services uh, areas for improvement. The report's on page 7 to 12 in the pack. I think Lady Gibb is going to introduce this uh, report. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, this report historically has been presented to the HR Committee for their consideration. Um, however, in consultation with the Chair, the, the last um, HR committee, which was scheduled for the 26th of January, was cancelled. So um, that's why the paper is being presented here today. Um, the uh, paper is the recommendation is to seek um, approval to close this area for improvement, which is relating to the provision of wellbeing support for staff. Um, so I want to take the opportunity really just to kind of champion and showcase some of the really good work that, that the service has done to um, assure itself that staff have got the appropriate access to wellbeing support, um, both trauma related support and general uh, mental health and wellbeing support. So section um, 2.6 identifies some of the additional work over and above what was already in place which which has been put into effect since the last HMI inspection. So um, I'll run through some of the main highlights. I wanted to, to draw your attention to the work that the service has done with regards to post-critical incident support. Um, and that includes uh, updating policy and procedure, but also additional training for managers and uh, operational staff to ensure that um, operational staff have got access to appropriate post-incident support. And we've also scheduled uh, trauma awareness training for duty officers, which will uh, happen early this year. Um, we've also commissioned some additional face-to-face -face psychological assessment and psychological therapy provision, um, which is a welcome addition to, to our current offer. We have a range of mental health wellbeing support for employees pr provided both for our occupational health team, through our employee assistance programme and other sites. And um, we've recently had a, a crew manager at one of our fire stations who's initiated a men's walk and talk um, initiative and that's designed to improve men's mental health and to combat loneliness. Um, hopefully that will illustrate the ownership and the responsibility that the entire workforce feels to, to deal with these issues. We're working with our managers both to uh, increase their competence and their confidence to, to deal with mental health issues and that uh, includes delivery of a range of awareness sessions and training. And we're really proud to be working with the University of Derby Mental Health Hub and they're supporting us to um, improve how we support mental health promotion and also are looking to uh, support the service to, to achieve against external mental health standards. 
You may be aware we've had a peer support team in place for, for a number of years now and they are colleagues who are trained facilitators to support people who are um, suffering from chronic stress and historic trauma and we're, we're pleased to continue to, to support them and have an ongoing commitment to, to making time available for them to do that work uh, in conjunction with the service. And we're also now a signatory and a funding partner for the Suicide Prevention Crisis Line, which has been developed by the National Fire Chiefs Council. Um, so hopefully that gives a bit of a summary of some of the additional work that we've put into place since the inspection. We've uh, got an evaluation process set up and we'll be looking to, to gauge the continued um, success and how well these initiatives are understood and embedded throughout the workforce through staff surveys and also working with our employee networks and representative bodies um, to make sure that staff are aware of the provision and that they know how to access it. Um, so based on what I've uh, said, I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. Thank you, Leela. Just uh, before I bring in Councillor Bailey from my perspective, I think this is absolutely excellent. I think it's a really superb piece of work and I think he shows not only a very considered responsiveness to the area for improvement from uh, HMI, but actually the such wide range right across the service and the fact that he's not just providing support services, he's actually people coming up with their own ideas and owning issue themselves I think is is really really reassuring and, and the report itself is also very very comprehensive and assuring members that the service is responding to this and taking this issue very seriously and obviously given the fact this is an emergency service that day in day out in a whole range of issues is dealing with traumatic incidents it's all the more important that we get this uh, applied so thank you for the way you presented the report and the report leader but also thank you to, to everybody involved with such a considered and thorough response to, to the area of uh, I'd just like to concur with the remarks of uh, Councillor Bay in terms of the importance of this uh, piece of work. Um, in terms of two comments to make, 2.5, uh, 23rd of June 2003, uh, maybe worth changing that one. Yeah, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> and um, in terms of uh, the second bullet point on 2.6, uh, this training on uh, tra trauma awareness and support, is this going to be a continuous piece of work? You know, are we going to be you know, continuing these training sessions? And if you are, on what schedule will you be doing so? Yeah, so, so ordinarily um, we will recruit to station manager roles annually. So we'll make sure that that training is, is delivered annually as part of their induction. To, so we're catching any new managers as, as they come through the service. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Excellent report, as I say, uh, absolutely and, and endorse it. Uh, I know from personal experience that when you when you attended something where there's been a, a fatality, you might not think you need the support straight away, but you do. As I said, and the fact that it is ongoing and, and where whenever you need it, as I say, you, you might not realise you need I also uh, extraordinarily commend you for the fact that you're reviewing relevant policies uh, such as menopause support and maternity and, and other family issues because as I say, uh, regardless of what gender people people are, you you do need that support to be recognised and, and the rest of it. And I think you've done an, ex an excellent job in, in, in covering an area that is Broadly varied, but it's so very important. Thank you, Councillor Fedora, and then I'll bring uh, the Chief. Yeah, just, just to echo what uh, Councillor Fielding said, really great work uh, compared to the last time at um, Human Resources uh, Committee. This is a great uh, improvement and uh, great work, and uh, keep it going. Well done. Accusations. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. I suppose really a bit of a history lesson. When we had our first um, HMI inspection, they commended the service for the offer, but the fact there wasn't an overarching strategy. So the first inspection talked about what was overarching strategy. The service dealt with that strategy through the wellbeing strategy that members will have seen. And then when they came back in their second inspection, they said that you've got lots of things in place, but the staff were, weren't always aware of the offer. 
and that was the area for improvement to raise awareness. Hopefully what this has given, and I'm, you know, I'm sure about what the team has done, is we've gone way over and above the area for improvement and we've done what we feel is right for the organisation. Uh, and we've made loads of improvements around it. I hope and I believe that every staff member will feel the effects of that. Uh, and as Cass Field had said, it's not just about um, you know, the firefighters' traumatic experiences, which is you know, painful enough at times. It, it's about the sort of like the difficulty people have in life and coming to work and thriving and being productive. So I think the offer, you know, I'd stand us against any organisation, if I'm being honest, and I might, that might be somewhat arrogant, um, but somebody come and disprove it to us then. Um, so I'm super proud of the whole of the team's work because it's not been easy. Um, there's been challenging, the last couple of years have been challenging for lots of reasons. But I'm super proud, in particular in this area, of the offer that we do offer to staff. Um, and as well, there's a little bit about making sure we encourage them. And I think we will, through the survey, is find out they've got to also do, you know, self-motivate to access these things and ask the questions rather than wait for it to arrive at them. So there is some work we've got to do as onboarding and inductions and the call surveys about making sure people are aware of what's there for them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chief. Councillor Thank you. Just very quickly, again, welcome to the report. It's obviously, again, uh, the work, much of the report, the work's been done. I think just for me, it's to make sure that we keep it on the radar as well because, of course, it's great to close off for the report, but obviously we're there not just to ticket off a report is there to actually just the benefit it gives. So in terms of if the HR committee are still just viewing what we're doing every sort of six months or so because again my experience of all those years of managing people in the organisation is the needle can sometimes change from the employee's point of view. If they think something's yeah. not on the radar or not important, it might even though all the work's been done it might be great, but for the last three months it's not been there. It can change that yeah. not in perception but also the feeling. So as long as that is just being kept to be on the radar so to speak and we just keep you no know, keep um, you know, pace of what all the great work's been done already, we shame to lose that going forward because it's great what's been done there. If I could respond, yeah. Chairman. Um, you, you're absolutely right, Councillor. There's, there's a bit about the boom and bust and sustaining the good offer. I think internally, with the work we're doing around, um, that will come obvious to members, um, as particularly as group leaders, as we start to sort of socialise some ideas, the, some of the structural things I want to see in the organisation as we develop the next CRMP that members will start to see in draft about how we performance report. And what we keep an eye on so we already do absence monitoring case by case and things so there's lots of things we do but we want to make sure that the strategic they're reported to the right level so internally we look at people so we just want to make sure we're looking at people all the way along so i think some of that will give you some assurance along the way brilliant thank you thank you Chief. thank you Lila. Um, the recommendation is on page 11 which is that members approve Closure of the area for improvement relating to the provision of well-being support. So I'm with the recommendations so we have a second that. Second uh, Seconded by the Vice Chair. Are colleagues in favour of that? Yeah. yeah. That's agreed. 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 Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item on our agenda item five is the people's strategy update, which is on pages 13 to 20 in our agenda pack. And uh Peter is going to present this report. Thank you, Chair. Um, so this is a routine update on progress uh, against the people strategy. Um, I think we use the term quite a lot to say people are our greatest effort, uh, greatest asset and delivery of our CRMP objectives. The, the strategy is really key to, to ensuring the successful delivery of, of, of what we do as an organisation. So the people strategy aims to uh, integrate planning, leadership and, and, and cultural elements and the services people strategy is underpinned by a number of national um, standards and work streams that have been developed by the National Fire Chiefs Council to, to develop um, effective working practices across the sector. So in terms of some of the key um, elements I wanted to draw out, there's a, there's a, a lot of detail in the report which, um, which you will have read but I think a couple of bits that I'd like to, uh, to, to pull out, so there's been a lot of work ongoing um, currently about sustainable workforce planning, particularly for the operational workforce, so we're currently uh, running whole time uh, recruitment and there's a Herculean effort currently going on both uh, for the positive action uh, activities that have preceded that and now the, the recruitment and selection processes themselves. Um, this will support the maintenance of the operational uh, establishment at the, at the numbers that we forecast and planned for. 
During the period since we last uh, updated and reported against the People's Strategy, Ashfield Fire Station has also returned to a whole time cover model and that was achieved in, in November last year as you'll be aware. Also in terms of workforce planning, um, there's some significant work streams which are being delivered as part of the Futures 25 Change and Improvement Programme. Specifically, this is focused on a review of our prevention and community engagement functions. And that will conclude towards the end of this financial year and, and further details will be provided to, to members at Full Fire Authority later on this month um, with regards to the outcome of that but this will help to meet one of the commitments made within the pre pool strategy about a focus on improvement within this area. Uh, with regards to operational training, the services have been involved for a number of years now with regional colleagues to deliver um, and implement national operational guidance. I'm proud to say that we're still very active in the region with regards to developing training materials um, to support and ensure we've got consistent standards of training and maintenance of competence for our operational staff both within Nottinghamshire but also more broadly within the East Midlands. Um, this project has been pivotal to ensuring firefighter safety particularly at, at cross-border incidents. Picking up on a couple of the other priorities within the operational training department, the, the focus for training this year has been what we call compartment fire behaviour training and that provides firefighters with the necessary skills and, and knowledge to um, firefight in, in compartments, so for example within a flat within a high rise residential block. Um, and uh, by way of assurance, 98% of our operational personnel are currently competent against all national core skills. Um, and these competence levels are, are monitored monthly via um, the CRMP Assurance Board by SLT. Uh, members will also be aware we've made a significant capital investment uh, in recent years to upgrade the Incident Command Training Facilities at Mansfield Fire Station. And we now deliver in-house training to our supervisory managers right up to, to group managers in the organisation. Um, at some state-of-the-art training facilities that we have there that provide realistic uh, virtual training uh, development and revalidation. And I would say that the investment in these facilities has really improved the, the quality of the training that we're able to offer, um, but also improved the cost effectiveness as it's, as it's meant that we can bring some of the training that was previously outsourced back in-house. With regards to leadership um, and management development, we are uh, adopting a number of NFCC products, both the supervisory leadership programme and we're also now delivering a level five leadership training to our middle managers. We're also working in conjunction with other public sector partners in the local area um, to deliver a transformational leadership programme with Nottingham Trent University um, aimed at potential future strategic leaders. Uh, with regards to cultural improvement, obviously a key part of the strategy is about positive workplace and positive work, workplace culture. Um, and members may be aware that we've recently implemented a say-so independent reporting line for staff to be able to raise concerns in a confidential manner. And also uh, the Futures 25 programme has now encompassed all areas of, of culture and equality, diversity and inclusion to, to make sure that we've got both coordination around these activities and also access to additional funding and, and resources through the earmark reserve uh, to ensure that we're really embedding change and improvement in this area. I'd also like to identify um, uh, paragraph 2.14 the significant funding that the authority have agreed to um, make improvements to shower change in facilities and, and dignity at work for, for both staff and for service users. That work's now well underway. We've got four sites where we've got, got contractors in currently improving shower changing facilities uh, for staff at those sites. 
Section 215 talks about workforce engagement and the range of activities that we undertake to make sure that we are communicating effectively with the workforce and also getting feedback from them. Um, and before Christmas we had four successful staff conferences which we held at the uh, Hindu temple in Nottingham and they were attended by a quarter of our entire workforce so it was a really good opportunity for staff to uh, get together we did some joint problem solving and it was a good opportunity for members of staff from across the organisation to, to come together and work together for the day. The remainder of the report, report really talks about um, the wellbeing support and, and a number of the other issues that I've covered within the previous report, so I wasn't planning to dwell on them, but again, happy to take any questions if there are any. Thank you, Lee. Um, very comprehensive, lots and lots of excellent work going uh, on, and I think it all being brought together in one place and being articulated in one place is really very helpful. Any comments or questions for Lee? Yeah, just, just to add, in terms of my, my sense of pride as a Chief Bar Officer, certainly I'm coming to two years as your Chief Bar Officer and I've done a lot of reflections about what difference have we made in terms of over the team and hopefully members get some assurance from the range of things that are covered in here. This is in the backdrop of difficulties still in the public sector and all the issues that is in the press, real or perceived. Um, you know, there is something around that. I think the employee workforce, hopefully we'll see that there is real sort of focus of the leadership about what they feel is right as the priorities and what's important and I think we've decided that you know over our commitment is about that quality of approach not just the quantity of the approach being made sure we're focused so the leader touched on the incident command and um, we had an incident command at the previous Bestwood headquarters but we made the decision through some of the objectives that we wanted to build on that not just go backwards we want to make sure we're built and improved and I think you know, we've seen the Mansfield site, the improvements we've made there, massive um, difference it's making now. And that's not me perceiving that, that's conversations I've had with staff that work in those facilities about what are they seeing about your commanders. So the people you would see, your constituents would see on the fire engines um, as the commanders, the staff who do the instant command training are telling me what they're saying is the quality is definitely going up. Hopefully we can do some sort of like quantitative and qualitative assessment of that, not just the 98%, but actually what is the difference. Um, and we're challenging ourselves, hopefully what members will see, we're not prepared to be complacent. Um, we know we've got a long way to go in some areas, and we know you know members will see HMIs coming up in the next couple of months, and they will take a view of us um, as well. Um, and really just a thanks in terms of, we've come with a lot of recommendations over the last 24 months to members. And, you know your factors and you know, that's really important to me is about my my confidence as your chief that you know you are backing us with some of these investments because it is difficult sometimes to tend to spending public money i get that but i think what you'll see is you're preparing the workforce and the organization for future years to come in a really positive light thank you chair thank you chief thank you Lena. thank you trevor being involved in the excellent work of the recommendation is that members note the progress on the delivery of the people strategy is the recommendation a second? Second. Is that agreed, everybody? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda, colleagues, is exclusion of the public. So it's to consider excluding the public from the meeting during consideration of the remaining items in accordance with section 100A, 100A of the Local Government Act 1972 under Schedule 12A Part 1 on the basis that having a regard to all the circumstances, the public interest in maintaining an exemption outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information. So I'll move the recommendation. Is that seconded? Seconded, yeah. Colleagues happy to agree? Agreed. Yeah. Can I ask you to stop? 